So um, you should know what the structure. So basically, how would this look like on a problem? They probably wouldn't. Uh, in fact, uh, on the problem, then actually, you need to know these structures. You need to be able to recognize them when you see them, because you probably wouldn't say Sanger's plus glycine. He would say he would just draw this. He would just draw this, and you need to say, aha, this has been labeled by Sanger's reagent. Uh -huh. So you need to be able to recognize what Sanger's reagent looks like or what the dancel chloride. So he'd have like. to give you a product. He can't just say, oh, we have, we're starting with an octopeptide. Have to yeah, he, he say you're starting with an octopeptide, and then he will give you the products of the total acid hydrolysis. He'll say, you're going to take the octopeptide, and you're going to treat it with Sanger's reagent, and then you're going to do total acid hydrolysis, and here's the products. Okay? All right, so we can do this labeling with the Sanger's or the Dancil chloride, but there's a complication. start with a dipeptide that has glycine and lysine. This is lysine. Lysine is four carbons and an amine. So I've gotten rid of the old side chain here and I've changed this into lysine. Now let's say we take this dipeptide. Again, in the real problems, you'll have longer things, but I don't want to draw eight peptides, so I'm only going to draw two. Uh, that's hard enough. Now, um, let's say that we try labeling this with the Sanger's reagent. Well, will this nitrogen attack the Sanger's reagent? Yes, because it's an amine. Will this nitrogen attack? No, because it's an amide. Will this carboxy group attack? No. Will this attack? Yes. Because yes. it's an amine. So this kind of complicates things because now the Sanger's reagent is not only on the N-terminus. It can also be on this side chain. Now, actually, this is not a very serious complication. This is not going to give us any trouble as long as we know about it. We just put them both on the end. Hmm? <laughs> I don't know if I followed that idea. Okay. So let's see what happened here. So both of these nitrogens now will attack this. This is why it's so crucial to keep in mind the difference between amines and amides. Amides are not nucleophilic, but amines are. Okay? All right. So now, after we put in the Sanger's reagent, there'll be Sanger's reagent here, and there will also be Sanger's reagent here. So essentially you're saying Sanger, even if it's an amine on a side chain, it will still go to the side chain, because it doesn't know what, what to do. Oh, yeah. So the Sanger's reagent doesn't know that its job is to label the amines. <laughs> That's right. That's the whole problem of the chemists. We can't just tell the molecules what to do. We have to find molecules that want to do what would work well for us. Okay. okay. Thank you. And the hydrogens will disappear. So what's going to happen if we react this with Sanger's reagent? Why is there still hydrogen there on the nitrogen? Only one leaves? Or? Yeah, that's right. That's what usually happens after so a nucleophilic attack, right? Right. If the nitrogen attacks, Immediately after the nitrogen attacks, it'll have a positive charge and it'll deprotonate once. Great. That'll leave it with one hydrogen. We're not really going through that whole mechanism. He didn't cover that in class, yeah. but we can picture basically what's happening. So this nitrogen is also attacking the Sanger's reagent. Originally, we can imagine it would have a positive charge, but then it'll deprotonate to look like this. Okay, so now we have Sanger's reagent here and here. Mm -hmm. And then what's, what are we going to get after the total acid hydrolysis? Well, we'll get this. Now, after the total acid hydrolysis, we're going to get two fragments, and both of them will have Sanger's reagent on them. This fragment will have the Sanger's reagent on it, and this fragment will also have the Sanger's reagent on it. That's really not going to be a big problem. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Good. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what, what would we do then if we were doing this problem? 
Well, the first thing we'd have to do is figure out what amino acids do these represent. So we'd look this up in our table and we'd say, so one thing that would be crucial is to find the alpha carbon. It's always crucial to find the alpha carbon. So we can still find the alpha carbon here. Remember, the alpha carbon is between the amino nitrogen and the carboxy carbon. The, amino, the alpha carbon is between the amino nitrogen and the, alpha, and the carboxy carbon. So here's our alpha carbons. Then we would say, aha, this is a glycine side chain. A hydrogen is just a glycine side chain. We can see that from our table. And then we would see this side chain, and we would look it up in, the, in, in your table. And when you look it up, you'll see here we have a side chain, which is four carbons and then a nitrogen. And that's lysine. Okay. All right, and then we would have to figure out which of these was the N-terminus. Of course, now we know which was the N-terminus because I wrote it here. But in the real problem, you wouldn't know who was the original N-terminus. But it's not too hard to tell. Whoever was the N-terminus should have the Sanger's reagent on the nitrogen that's on the alpha nitrogen. Whoever was the N-terminus should have the Sanger's reagent on its alpha nitrogen. Have Sanger's on alpha? On the alpha nitrogen. That's the nitrogen that's attached to the alpha carbon. Notice, here's the lysine. This alpha nitrogen is not labeled with Sanger's. Mm -hmm. This is not labeled with Sanger's. That tells us this must have been originally buried in an amide bond. This must have been buried in an amide bond. That's why it doesn't have the Sanger's reagent on it. Therefore, we know that this was not originally the N-terminus. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, this alpha nitrogen does have Sanger's reagent on it. So we know that this must have been not in an amide bond. It must have been the N-terminus. And we should just pretty much ignore this. We, we, we're not, we shouldn't be really um, disturbed by this Sanger's reagent at all. We should just say, well, gee, I know this is lysine. And I know that lysine side chains get labeled by Sanger's reagent. I would expect that a lysine side chain would get labeled by Sanger's reagent because they have an amine. But I know this is the side chain. So this has nothing to do with the N-terminus over here. This doesn't tell me the N-terminus. It's just uh, a uh, complication that this side chain got labeled with the Sanger's reagent. This is where the N-terminus could possibly have been, and it doesn't have the Sanger's reagent. Okay, so the point is it's possible that besides having Sanger's reagent on an alpha nitrogen, you might also have a Sanger's reagent on a side chain, and we should basically just ignore that. We know that that was not the original N-terminus. I don't know if that made any sense. Absolutely. Okay, so that's the main complication that can come from Sanger's reagent. What we want the Sanger's reagent to do is label the N-terminus. It will also coincidentally label any side chain amines. But that's really not a big distraction because we should be able to tell that those are side chain amines and that they didn't come from the original N-terminus. So it will label L N-terminus and side chains. But right. We'll and we've explained why that is. It labels any, anything that's nucleophilic. Yeah. Okay. The amines are nucleophilic. OK. All right, and again, we would have the same story with denso chloride. I haven't drawn that, but denso chloride also is an electrophile, and it labels amine nitrogens. So it would label side chain amines, and it would also label the N-terminus amine, but it's not going to label the amide nitrogens. Okay. 